Hello! The water level of the Dead Sea lies 430 meters below sea level and is dropping at a rate of about 1 meter per year. This is a very alarming fact. The water level in the Dead Sea is receding so quickly that one might think someone is secretly draining it into the desert. This majestic body of water, thanks to its unique properties, has always been a true natural wonder. However, today it stands on the threshold of an ecological transformation that could forever change its appearance. What makes this sea so captivating and, more importantly, is there still hope to save it? The name of this body of water was given by the ancient Greek writer and geographer Pausanias in the second century, who was the first to describe its waters. The Dead Sea is located in the Middle East. Its western shore borders Israel, while its eastern shore belongs to Jordan. The sea occupies part of the El Gor Tectonic Depression, also known as the Jordan Rift Valley. This basin stretches from north to south for about 300 kilometers and is roughly 25 kilometers wide. The shores of the Dead Sea lie 436 meters below the level of the world ocean, making it the lowest point on Earth's surface. At the same time, its water level continues to fall by about one meter every year. The Dead Sea is a landlocked body of water with no outlet to the ocean. It receives water primarily from the Jordan River, on whose banks many events described in the Bible took place. Several smaller rivers and seasonal streams also flow into it. The climate of the region surrounding the Dead Sea is characterized by arid desert conditions. Rainfall is extremely rare and sunny weather prevails almost all year round. The lowest air temperatures are recorded in winter when it cools down to about 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest occur in summer when the thermometer rises to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The water temperature of the lake is also remarkably stable. In winter, it rarely drops below 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and in summer it can reach 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit, allowing visitors to enjoy swimming all year round. The best time to vacation at Dead Sea Resorts is spring and autumn, when the heat is less intense. Despite its name, the Dead Sea is actually a lake since it has no connection to the world ocean. Over the centuries, it has been known by many names. The ancient Jews called it the Salt Sea, the Eastern Sea, and the Sea of Sodom. The Greeks and Romans referred to it as the Asphalt Sea, while the Arabs called it the Stinking Sea. The lake was formed on the site of the ancient Lake Lasan, which about 25,000 years ago occupied the entire El Gore Tectonic Depression. Around 10,000 to 14,000 years ago, the water level of Lake Lisan dropped and the body of water took on its present shape. The Dead Sea covers an area of about 609 square kilometers, with a maximum length of 50 kilometers and a width of 16 kilometers. Its size is quite small compared to both seas and lakes, and it continues to shrink due to human activity. Scientists predict that the Dead Sea may disappear within 700 to 900 years. For comparison, the largest saline endorrheic lake in the world, the Caspian Sea, covers 390,000 square kilometers, while Lake Issa-Kul spans 6,236 square kilometers. The Dead Sea is also not particularly deep, reaching a maximum of 295 meters. By contrast, the shallowest sea on Earth, the Sea of Ossov, is only 13 meters deep. Yet, in terms of salinity, the Dead Sea holds an absolute record among all bodies of water on the planet, up to 340 per thousand, meaning 340 grams of salt per liter of water. This is eight times higher than in the Red Sea, which has a salinity of 42 per thousand. However, while marine life thrives in the Red Sea, the extreme salt concentration in the Dead Sea makes it virtually uninhabitable for most forms of life. The extremely high salt concentration in the water was vividly demonstrated by Israeli designer Sigalit Landau. 
She immersed her black dress in the waters of the Dead Sea. She would regularly return to check on it and take intermediate photographs. Over time, more and more salt crystals accumulated on the fabric. Take a look at what the dress turned into after two years. However, in the 20th century, it was discovered that the Dead Sea is not as lifeless as previously thought. Up to 70 species of microorganisms live in it, including fungi and yeasts, which have managed to adapt to the hypersaline environment. In fact, life is bubbling beneath the surface of the Dead Sea. Scientists from Ben Gurion University found deep freshwater springs at its bottom. German researchers, in turn, identified new species of organisms growing near fissures in the seabed, although the existence of freshwater sources had been known for many years. Researchers also uncovered complex systems of deep springs that are invisible from the shore. These studies revealed that at the bottom of the sea, there are intricate networks of springs stretching for hundreds of meters and reaching depths of up to 30 meters. The springs emerge through fissures up to 15 meters in diameter and 20 meters deep, with steep, finely layered walls formed by alternating sedimentary rocks and minerals. Although scientists had been aware of the presence of freshwater springs beneath the Dead Sea for decades, the discovery of such a diversity of life in these springs came as a surprise, noted Dr. Danny Inuscu from the Microsensor Group at the Max Planck Institute in Germany, who leads the study of these microorganisms. The primary reason for the drying up of the Dead Sea is the shrinking of the Jordan River. Once, this great river supplied the Dead Sea with abundant water, but today it has been reduced to a polluted stream. In the mid-20th century, the Jordan carried about 1.3 billion cubic meters of water annually from the Sea of Galilee into the Dead Sea. Now this volume has dropped to just 10% of its original flow. According to the international environmental organization Friends of the Earth Middle East, the river's depletion is the result of Israel, Syria, and Jordan constructing numerous dams, canals, and water intakes over the past decades. In the last 30 years alone, Syria has built more than 40 dams on the Yarmouk River, one of the Jordan's key tributaries. In addition, Israel and Jordan use large evaporation ponds to extract phosphates from the water for fertilizer production. Environmentalists have long been sounding the alarm. If nothing changes, within a few decades, the once mighty Jordan will turn into a narrow trickle clogged with salts and silt. And just five to 10 years after the Jordan runs dry, the Dead Sea itself could remain only as a historical memory. Ancient records note, for example, that as early as the first century BCE, one of the traditional industries of the Dead Sea was the extraction of bitumen. Bitumen is the solid, easily melting fraction of petroleum. Interestingly, in the salty waters of the Dead Sea, this substance required no complex extraction methods. It simply floated to the surface accompanied by a strong odor. Fishermen would row out to the lumps of bitumen and collect what they needed. The Dead Sea lies above a zone of petroleum deposits. Under the effect of heat, the lighter components of the oil evaporate, leaving behind heavier bitumen residues beneath the seabed. When minor underground tremors occur, they can trigger a peculiar natural phenomenon often referred to as an asphalt volcano. Molten petroleum breaks through fissures in the seabed, enters the water, quickly cools, solidifies, and rises to the surface. The density of bitumen is about 1,150 kilograms per cubic meter, which is greater than that of normal water, but less than the density of the highly saline waters of the Dead Sea approximately 1,250 kilograms per cubic meter. This is precisely why bitumen is able to float in this body of water. The last time such a phenomenon was recorded was in 1969. Bitumen was highly valued in antiquity, especially in Egypt, where it was widely used for mummification. In 2019, Israeli researchers announced the discovery of the world's longest salt cave, located in the Mount Sodom range on the southeastern shore of the Dead Sea. Mount Sodom is famous for being composed almost entirely of rock salt. Particularly well known are the caves of Kalanal, Arubodim, and Mulham. Professor Amos Frumkin of the Hebrew University, who has studied caves in the Dead Sea region for more than 40 years, reported that the newly discovered cave exceeded 10 kilometers in length. 
The previous record holder for the longest salt cave was in Iran, where in 2006, the Namak Don Cave was found to stretch 6.5 kilometers. The main entrance to the Mulham Cave lies near the salt formation known as the Lot's Wife Pillar, associated with the biblical destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible describes how a woman was turned into a pillar of salt when she looked back at Sodom. Yoav Negev, founder of the Israel Cave Explorers Club, together with researcher Boav Langford from the university's research center, assembled a team of 80 volunteers from nine countries, among them Bulgaria, the United Kingdom, France, Croatia, Romania, and the Czech Republic. Over the course of a year and a half, participants spent about 1,500 working days surveying and mapping the cave's passages. The walls of the cave, composed of layers of rock salt, are adorned with snow-white stalactites, stalagmites, and columns. The inner surfaces are coated with a fine layer of dust carried in from the desert, giving the formations a characteristic amber hue. Unfortunately, alongside the breathtaking beauty of the caves, the receding waters of the Dead Sea are creating a serious problem, the formation of sinkholes. Beneath the dried soil lie deposits of salt, which are gradually dissolved by underground water. The resulting cavities cause sudden collapses of the ground. Today, more than 5,000 such sinkholes have been recorded along the shores of the Dead Sea whereas 40 years ago, there were none at all. Every year, hundreds of new sinkholes appear. Some of these craters reach up to 100 meters in diameter. The land, riddled with sinkholes, gives the impression of a place shaken by constant earthquakes. One sinkhole even swallowed an entire salt factory, which vanished underground in an instant. The sinkholes pose a serious threat to the local population, especially to farmers. In addition, busy highways run close to the Dead Sea, and the ongoing geological processes have become a significant danger for drivers. The ecological situation around the Dead Sea continues to worsen due to water pollution from plastic waste and sewage. Wastewater discharges from East Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories flow directly into the Dead Sea Basin. Governments hope that extreme natural conditions, such as strong solar radiation, will help neutralize harmful and hazardous substances. However, plastic waste does not simply disappear. It becomes invisible, dissolved in the water. Each year, the situation only grows more severe. On the Palestinian side, waste management measures are carried out mainly by private individuals. On the western shore of the Dead Sea, farmers have installed special reservoirs to collect wastewater, which is then reused in agriculture. Israeli authorities and environmental organizations are developing plans to improve the situation. However, a final solution to the problem will require the construction of a sewage network in the Palestinian territories. When that will happen, however, remains unknown. Environmentalists have long been trying to find ways to save the Jordan River and the Dead Sea. One possible solution is to connect the Dead Sea with the Red Sea. Activists from the Ecopeace movement proposed building a pipeline across the desert to link the two bodies of water. The idea received support from the World Bank and the United States. However, the project soon faced significant technical, financial, and political obstacles. In 2021, Jordan withdrew from the plan, citing Israel's loss of interest. Previously, British engineers had suggested a similar project to connect the Mediterranean and the Red Sea through the Dead Sea, but this plan also failed due to the significant drop in the Dead Sea's water level. Some scientists believe that the complete disappearance of the Dead Sea is unlikely, even if the current rate of drying continues. According to this hypothesis, as the water volume decreases, the density and salt content increase. Eventually, the rate of evaporation would balance with the inflow of water, preventing the lake from vanishing entirely. That's all for today, friends. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, leave your comments, and see you again soon.